Hi, I'm Min. I'll be presenting this work on learning instructor interventions from MOOC forums. This is work carried out at the National University of uh, Singapore. I'm representing uh, faculty from the School of Computer from the Computer Science Department. This is joint work with our colleagues uh, from NUS uh, Mutu Chandra Sakaran, who's the PhD student involved, uh, Kriyafika Raghupathi, representing the Center of and for the Development of Teaching and Learning, and the Provost's Office by uh, Professor Bernard Tan. And this work is in collaboration with our colleagues at the University of Pittsburgh, uh, Carrie Demons app and Diane Littman. So in an earlier speech at the uh, um, Asia Pacific Rim University's Education and Research Technology Forum, Richard Katz had given a keynote on the digital divide. And here he was talking about how important it is uh, for faculty to take a look at the two different discourses that are being discussed. Uh, first of all, we need to use EdTech as a way of um, doing a better job of their course, but we have crazy pressure also as faculty to dramatically lower the cost of higher education. But we need how to learn how to glue the technologies together that is going to make this effective. The only way that he was able to outline that we might be able to succeed at you know, doing better at what we're doing while uh, scaling up and lowering costs is to look at personalization technologies, right? Where everyone in every lower division course will have some type of personal Socrates to help them learn the area. So I make reference to another uh, popular novel by Neil Stephenson, The Diamond's Age, or as he puts it in the subtitle, A Long, Young Lady's Illustrated Primer, which uh, talks about how um, an ebook uh, of sorts of personalized technology can help a, a young lady learn in the future. So many of us might be aware of this uh, particular gentleman. His name is Carl Wieman. He's a Nobel laureate in physics, and he turns his attention from physics to challenges in science education. And he came up with the idea of something called deliberate practice, which many of us understand. The idea that uh, by employing our uh, curriculum in a practice-based manner where somebody is able to uh, learn a curriculum and then uh, right away apply it to some problem settings, they will be able to uh, master the information and content better. However, this is a problem because being able to do it very well for a small number of students doesn't scale. Okay, as you can see here, his approach required uh, relying on a very large cadre of science uh, and learning fellows, typically postdocs, and their initiative used over a dozen people to help uh, faculty convert their courses from the traditional lecture-styled one to one of deliberate practice. But such a system, we couldn't envision doing that for an undergraduate level because it's simply just too costly. So there are lots of problems with the scalability of using deliberate practice. And this is exacerbated when we go to talk about MOOCs because we are talking about huge scales and involved distance learning where somebody who's in place and relying on other cues uh, and in place tutoring, uh, which is typical of um, the approach of deliberate practice, is going to have problems. And in fact, the only place where we see face-to-face -face, or at least some type of interaction between the students and the instructors are in discussion forums. And we need to be able to do more with the instructor time that we have in order to mitigate the, the learning failures that are happening within MOOCs. So let's think about Professor A. Here's a professor who prefers to intervene as often as possible on a discussion forum. Why, we might ask? Well, they might say to engage students and to correct misconceptions. And that would be true of many of us uh, who might be listening to this talk. But in Amok, we have this big problem. It's very difficult to know, especially in a large-scale discussion forum, which threads are worthy of our time to address. 
In fact, if you can imagine your inbox after vacation, it's usually a nightmare. And that's exactly with the scale of emails and threads that we face as an instructor of a MOOC. So we'd like to recommend using an automated system which threads are worthy of an instructor's time to address. We can do this by obtaining training data for a machine learning algorithm. So uh, the way we do it is looking at Coursera data. Now in the Coursera data, when you look at a discussion forum, some of the threads are annotated by the system as being replied to by a staff, as you can see here in red. We're going to use those threads that uh, we have spidered from Coursera as positive examples. And discussion forums that have uh, a thread that was not intervened by an instructor as negative. So what we'd like to do in this research is to predict whether a staff will actually reply to an unseen thread when it is newly created on the forum or when it's been updated by another post. We start by looking at a corpus of 61 MOOCs uh, discussion forums. And the discussion forum threads come from a number of sub-forums which are usually typed as either homework, lecture, errata, or exam. You can see the distribution here. There are other posts that don't fall into these, but uh, we don't take those into consideration as we consider these four the major types that we want to look at. And among these, we can see that among all of the threads, there are certain numbers that are intervened and certain numbers that are not. In fact, 26,000 threads are present in this corpus, and out of that, about 7.7 thousand of them were actually intervened by somebody on the instructing staff. We looked at what types of features of the discussion threads correlate well with intervention. And not surprisingly, but unidentified by previous work, forum type encodes intervention priority. It is easy to understand that when there is an exam coming up, that students would have a lot of questions, and those questions would be timely to intervene on as an instructor. So you can see here that over 90% of the posts that relate to an exam are um, usually intervene by an instructor. On the contrary, if we look at homework threads, only about 50% of the homework threads were actually intervened. This means that instructors may view, on in general, that homework is up for student learners to deliberate with their peers, and only where necessary will an instructor step in to correct misconceptions. Other things that we looked at were consisted of discourse feed cues, such as agreements, affirmations, and appreciations of the original post, the length of threads of the post, including the number of posts and the number of sentences or words, and threads with deep discussions as indicated with the ratio of comments to posts. So when threads had a lot of different commentary, they might invite the instructor uh, to intervene and clarify. So when we put all of these different features into a simple machine learning framework, some supervised machine learner, we were able to do prediction. But the prediction came with very uh, varied performance. As you can see, we are uh, graphing in this case F measure, which is a combination of precision and recall. And the higher F measure, the better. Some of our forums did fairly well. For example, on this machine learning course by Andrew Ung of Coursera, 64% uh, uh, of the posts were correctly identified by our machine learner as needing to be intervened. But other ones where the instructor doesn't intervene a lot, for example, in this music production course, or this comp course on computer compilers, our system did very poorly. And so you can see, even though the average is about 41%, there is a very wide variance in how well the systems did. And we think this has a lot to do with this problem of the intervention ratio. The intervention ratio tells us what percentage of posts or threads in a discussion forum were actually intervened by an instructor. 
you can see that some of our courses, like this medical neurology course, 71% of all the threads were intervened by some instructor. Whereas in the music production course, only 1% of the threads were actually intervened by an instructor. This wildly different ratio actually fairly well predicts how well our individual uh, machine learning system does at uh, predicting the results. So when we put in more data by looking at all of the 14 courses that we've annotated, and not only the individual course, which is what this uh, third column represents, and we use more training data, we are able to do better prediction. As you can see here, uh, the percentages go up a little bit, you know, 4% on average, but when we look at a macro average, then it comes down to 50%. We can move up the corpus by giving more data. Okay, so we looked at the case of using just 14 MOOCs as data and 61 MOOCs as data. And surprisingly, counterintuitively at first, we can see the performance doesn't improve. In fact, it drops when we add more data. The problem here is that the diversity of MOOCs causes a big problem because the varying levels of intervention make the training and test set distributions quite different. Okay, so back to the drawing board. We decided that we were going to look at other elements that might help predict instructor intervention that might rely on some non-discourse, uh, non-discipline specific information. We turn to natural language processing, which has a program called discourse parsing. This program can automatically distinguish um, the relations between sentences as being temporally related, conditionally related, uh, expanding the details of a previous sentence or comparing uh, relations between different sentences. The technology isn't very yet reliable, but that doesn't mean it doesn't provide signal that could help us induce better processing and prediction. And we found that actually it does significantly aid the decision and because discourse cues are normally not discipline specific, it is robust against many different domains. Let's look at an example. Here in this example, we can see many uh, discourse connectives in underlined in green, which are all buts, which ex exemplify some type of contrastive discourse connective. Okay? And we also see some uh, words underlined in purple indicating some type of confusion. Okay? These types of uh, discourse cues and vocabulary um, let us believe that that post uh, requires instructor intervention. Now let's drill down a little bit more and think about why intervention is necessary. Why do individual instructors intervene differently? We saw that on the previous slide where different courses had different levels of instructor intervention. Timeliness? subjectivity or pedagogical philosophy? Could they be responsible? Well, our project as a nutshell wants to look at this. We want to discover effective intervention patterns for faculty members to take. And to do that, we are going to build a corpus of labeled interventions from actual interventions made by MOOC instructors, and then model these interventions using a machine learning process. We're going to use the model to better uh, build a corpus uh, of labeled intervention instructors by helping to clarify the taxonomy that we need for the labeled interventions. And so earlier we saw that there was a very large diversity across the courses in different subject areas and the volume of threads and interventions. This graph shows you what we are talking about. 
depending on the ratio between the red and the striped red candy bar areas, you can see the volume of threads that a course has and the varying levels of instructor intervention there are. For example, in compilers, there's a very large amount of threads that are not intervened. The instructor hardly participates in the, instructor in the uh, discussion forum at all. Contrast this with something like medical neuro, which we talked about earlier, which has a very high level of instructor intervention. This might be due to people like Professor B, who might have a pedagogical stance not to intervene, who might find the students uh, have the use of the forum for their own, and this is just to promote a peer learning and the instructor might be able to intervene in other manners, for example using announcements or in class and using the discussion forum strictly for peer intervention. We ask ourselves this other question, is intervention subjective? Well it turns out that probably it is. Here we see on both sides of this uh, graphic two different threads. Okay? These are from the same course uh, talking about a programming assignment, two different programming assignments and their deadlines. One was actually intervened by an instructor staff on the left hand side, while another one on the right was not intervened. We're not sure why there's a difference, but we think the intervention should have happened in both. We think this might be caused partially by the user interface of a discussion forum. Typically, when you log into a discussion forum, we see threads that are viewed um, and ordered in the user interface by the time that they were last updated as a default. Because of this, some threads that have a lot of traffic in the forum may not even be able to be seen by a staff member because they have been overshadowed by other posts that have been made more recently. In fact, there might be a bias induced by this user interface in the sense that only the first couple of results that are visible on a user interface have a higher chance of being intervened by an instructor. And in search engines such as Google and other uh, web search engines, they do this type of studies all the time by looking at the heat map of where people click and look at when they are looking at search results. When we take a look at when people intervene on a discussion form and map them back to the position that they actually appeared in the user interface at the time this instructor did the intervention, we do actually see a very strong measure of instructor bias. So in this graph, we have frequency on the y-axis and the rank of the thread in the user interface on the x-axis. As we can see here, there are very, very few threads, maybe just uh, a couple times here by frequency, where threads that are around um, the second, third, or fourth, or fifth page of the discussion form that are being intervened by instructors. By and large, most of the instructor interventions, over maybe two or three thousand of them, happen at the first rank, and only a few, maybe 20 or so, happen at this rank here, at the lower ranks. So there is a power law, or more uh, specifically, a um, uh, log uh, logistic log of power fit. When we are able to measure this position bias, we can model it too. We can add the position bias feature into our classifier, and with this position bias feature, we can see a larger, a larger amount of prediction accuracy. Right. So most of these results improve. And in fact, we get over a 13% improvement in F measure when we use position bias as an additional feature to predict whether the instructor should intervene or not. This opens the possibility of predicting 
threads that are missed specifically because they did not show up on the first page of an instructor's user interface in a MOOC. And then to correct that. This is the end of our talk. We'd like to also conclude by saying that we are forming a data consortium for MOOCs. We would like to encourage you as an audience to share your data that comes from your MOOCs and ask all of us to take steps towards reproducible research by joining this data consortium. The data consortium is something that uh, Coursera also backs. They have indicated their interest and is supporting this endeavor. We would like you to also try to reproduce experiments from our work without sharing any of your data. You can do this by going to GitHub and looking for lib for MOOC data, downloading the software, and trying to replicate our own experiments on your data. At the heart of our matter that we into, uh, indicated earlier is the problem of coding interventions. So right now, we, in the work that we presented, we're predicting instructor interventions but without understanding what type of interventions they are. In our uh, current work, we're looking at typing or coding the interventions to understand what are the reasons why an instructor would want to intervene and coming up with better guidelines for doing that. These are sample ideas for the types of transactive statements that we are going to be using to indicate what type of annotations uh, a peer response or an instructor's intervention should be coded for. In a transactive uh, uh, taxonomy, we are saying that one statement of a user or a MOOC uh, learner builds on another one. In conclusion, I'd like to thank all of our collaborators in this work and to urge you to think about big data about small data. We need to build models for predicting interventions and we need to also export tools for handling MOOC data and iteratively creating a data set for interventions. To do this, we've tried to make strides in this area by exporting the tools and encouraging you to make use of your data to help the community come together. We hope this type of research will enable us to build automated forum triage tools and to also build prescriptive guidelines for intervention for future uh, faculty because what we have prescriptive guidelines for intervention, they apply to the in-classroom setting and not to a massive open online courses. Thank you very much.